Uh, perhaps you will give a chance now to Mr. Afrasiab to uh, say something. And I'm sure that he will try to answer some of your questions about the role of the region. Please go ahead. Very much, esteemed Lakhtar Barahimi Sahib, honorable panelists, dear friends. First of all, I would also like to thank India International Center for organizing today's webinar. And I would also thank Akar Foundation and Heart of Asia Society for publishing the book. Well, uh, I will be brief because uh, very learned and experienced people have already spoken. Uh, I would just uh, make a few points. My first point is a comparison between the Geneva Accords in 1988, April 1988, and the Doha Agreement, uh, which was probably in uh, 2020. Uh, you see, the first was fig leaf for the Soviet Union to withdraw from Afghanistan uh, and save its fees. And this Doha Agreement is a fig leaf for the United States. Uh, but if we compare the two, I think uh, the Geneva Accords, although they were they were meant to be violated and they were violated, uh, but uh, they, I mean content-wise, they were better than this Doha Agreement. Unfortunately, uh, this Doha Agreement has systematically weakened uh, the, and uh, isolated the Afghan state and the Republican system, and it has legitimized and empowered Taliban. That's how Taliban. Uh, without giving anything, have got legitimacy, released their prisoners, and are now demanding uh, their emirate, are imposing their emirate militarily uh, on Afghanistan. And I think uh, this framework of Doha Agreement was uh, flawed from day one. We, we have been saying this. You see, uh, when there is negotiations between state and non-state players, the first thing which is demanded by the state players is, first of all, the renouncing of violence, in this case, terrorism. And the second is recognition of the right of the state. Unfortunately, these things were not even mentioned in the Doha Agreement. Similarly, the Taliban's sanctuaries were also not uh, a part of the agreement. Uh, so in a way, uh, this, this uh, uh, flawed process, unfortunately, has landed Afghanistan and the entire region into a, in a very difficult situation. This brings me to Taliban. For example, we know Taliban in the past 1990s, everyone of us know that they were uh, the one, it was an edifice, edifice for uh, this terrorist syndicate, which launched terrorist attacks in four continents in 1990s. You see, th these were serious things. Of course, the 9-11 was the most serious, but even before that, they had launched attacks in Asia, Africa, America, and Europe. But you see, they, they, they have never been, uh, they, they have never renounced those, those things. And uh, they, they still not only uh, uh, own, the, own those, they own that past, but they also, even today, have not been able to cut the relations with Al-Qaeda. Even uh, it, it is part of Doha agreement, but the reports that have emerged from UN and even US state agencies reveal that uh, Al Qaeda is there, and there are thousands of uh, fighters fighting alongside Taliban even today. There are thousands of Pakistanis. We receive dead bodies every day uh, from Afghanistan. Pre President war going on in Afghanistan, from Hilmand, from Ghazni, uh, uh, from other pro provinces of Afghanistan. So uh, uh, Taliban have not even uh, uh, shown their intention uh, to, to uh, change their attitude or their relationship with other uh, terrorist groups. So uh, it brings us to another uh, question, because it seems that the US is convinced that after degrading Al-Qaeda, uh, it's not, uh, uh, I mean, the regional terrorism is not US headache. Uh, although, personally, I think it, it, it is uh, it is U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U
it, it can grow like it grew in 1990s. Even at that time, not many people were uh, agreeing, but then it happened. But in, in any case, they, it seems that they, they think so. So uh, it, it brings us to the regional question, the question of this region uh, to face uh, terrorism and to face the situation which is, uh, uh, which, which is uh, developing in our region. This brings me to Pakistan. Pakistani generals are not anymore in denial about the presence of Taliban sanctuaries because this is uh, uh, their strength. It gives them uh, leverage in international uh, arena and it also strengthens them uh, politically uh, in the hybrid system which is prevailing in Pakistan. But you see, there is a very real danger of Pakistan getting more radicalized with the ascendancy of Taliban in Afghanistan. We are witnessing regrouping of different Taliban and terrorist groups on the east of the line. And it seems Taliban's plan B uh, is uh, being uh, gradually implemented, which they had mentioned in Doha, that if the negotiation process collapses, they will have military uh, attacks. And this, it seems they are going, going for that. Now, uh, Pakistan has 36,000 religious seminaries and uh, the syllabus and other things have not been reformed. Uh, other uh, structures uh, which were used in terrorism in 1980s and 90s are still intact. So there is a real threat of Pakistan uh, getting radicalized. Uh, Radha mentioned about recent uh, initiative for Park India uh, negotiations. Yes, uh, uh, the negotiations were started at the behest of General Bajwa, the chief of army staff, who is the uh, most powerful person in the hybrid system. And Imran Khan started, the Prime Minister Imran Khan started this process on his behest. But then immediately there was resistance. And in 48 hours, uh, the government had to uh, take back its words. And in the last three days, uh, I have seen uh, attack from the hawks, uh, and and uh, I see retreat uh, in the camp, which was uh, talking about uh, uh, normalization of relations with India. So that uh, with the rise of Taliban, this trend can grow and it can re really create threats. As far as China is concerned, I think Chinese were expecting that uh, the world will not treat Taliban the way they have. They thought China will uh, sort of. Uh, uh, integrate them in the CPAC uh, pro projects and China will divert their energy to economic activities, uh, bring them to peaceful activities. But probably Chinese must be uh, also disappointed and concerned to see. Uh, but what but, but, uh, uh, Professor Ban Rubin said that uh, Pakistan is uh, in a stronger position, I, I will uh, a little bit disagree with that with great respect. I would say that uh, Pakistan is in a very bad shape uh, because of uh, economic conditions. Uh, Pakistan is an economic mess. It is very heavily dependent on IMF. China cannot really be an alternative for uh, American aid to Pakistan because Chinese are giving loans and those loans are to be paid back. Pakistan is juggling with uh, 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 short-term economic policies uh, taking uh, loans from Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and IMF. Uh, uh, but you see, it is very difficult for Pakistan to uh, be uh, to violate Western pressure at this point of time. Uh, if if the West wants Pakistan to change its uh, attitude, uh, there, there is a lot of leverage that can be brought. But the question is, will the West bring this pressure? Uh, will the West like to uh, keep the pot boiling in Eurasia uh, because of the uh, emerging Cold War in Eurasia, as was mentioned by Professor Barney Rubin and other speakers? Th 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 that is uh, a, a very big uh, question. But I think uh, the Russians have also jumped in the fray, uh, believing that U.S. will not be able to uh, take the process to logical conclusion and Russians would like to replace American influence in Afghanistan, but unfortunately, that is also uh, that seems to be more of daydreaming because the ground realities uh, are totally different. 
So I, I, I think uh, the U.S. should uh, keep uh, working with uh, powers the way U.S. worked with China uh, under President Obama, uh, with Russia, with Iran, with Pakistan. I think that that is very important, and that that seems to be uh, a reasonable solution. And the question of sanctuaries should be raised so that Taliban behave and they come down from the pedestal from which they seem to be dreaming about revival of their emirate, which, of course, a change in Pakistan uh, will not accept. I am I'm confident uh, it will not work, but it, will, it can lead to civil war. It can lead to destruction, which will have consequences for the region and for the world. I thank you very much.